yes, I have. Why do you ask? I'll keep making them. By the way, so Ben, I saw you're in Microsoft Teams, but really this is good for everyone. Y'all don't have to do it now, but like the first time you're sick, you're going to want to like be able to use this stuff as in it's supposed to have to tell your parents to self sign in. You just have to download it from MicrosoftTeams.com. But yeah, I mean, I'm just going to put everything for all my classes on this thing. Oh, this is a, oh, this is 2.5, so this is for the eighth graders actually. But like anytime you need a PDF for homework, like you won't really have to email me anymore. It should all be up on here. Uh, yeah, Ben, is that how have you been using that today? Uh, yeah, but I've been using Latin three, not two point five. Right. I I put the least into Latin three because it's. I mean, it's just you, but it will be everyone. Um, yeah, y'all get the deer for some reason. He doesn't look quite as Latin centric. But... Well, we need a but yeah, you just load the class notebook page and it tells you how it works. I put stuff under files. If you see that files tab, I put the, I'm, I'm going to keep uploading to YouTube and uploading the MP4 directly to here because it's easy to do both. It shouldn't be. Under YouTube. Yeah, I just couldn't find it. Really? I just wondered because I also couldn't find the Rubik's, so I had to get the link directly. Did you just search Mr. Catalanello? Yeah, and I, yeah. Posts is also good because you can, it shows everything that happened. Post? Yeah, yeah. I, at first I thought post would be useless, but it's like how I can make announcements where everyone sees it. Class notebook is a little weird. I have to like send each page. Like Ben said hi. I said something. Uh, um, but that's weird. I, I thought if you search Mr. Catanella, my videos came up, which honestly made me feel weird. Well, there might be other Catanellas out there. There's another Daniel Catalanello in New York. He's a lawyer. But, uh. Ooh, lawyer. Jeffrey Land or a Latin teacher? Even though Cicero, my, my idol is a Latin teacher, was a lawyer, I'd rather be a Latin teacher. Um, lawyers it used to be this, like, like even in To Kill a Mockingbird, like, Atticus is, like, cool. But nowadays, like, everyone hates lawyers. Well, lawyers are awesome. They, they can be. Yeah. I guess. I like in community. Community is one of my favorite shows, and their uh, the main character is a. Lawyer, yeah, Jeff right? Winger. Yeah. I know. Yeah. That's funny. You like Community. Community's pretty good. Uh, have you seen the D and D episode? Yes, yeah, really it. good. Yeah. Really good. I um, want to play D and D, but my parents say I can't. Yeah. Well, it's a it's a game of the, the imagination, so you can kind of just do it if you want to. But what was I going to say? Oh, criminal defense. That would be weird. If you if you're a lawyer and you're a criminal defense, and you get signed to someone you know did a bad thing, <laughs> and you have to defend them. That's, like, weird, but it, it's, like, part of our justice system. I guess we're supposed to like it. Anyway, y'all can figure out Microsoft Teams. You need to the first time you're sick, and then snow days happen, and everyone will, like, actually fully have to know it. Okay, we've, we've just been chilling out today uh, so far. We should probably do something. What? Oh, yeah. We, oh, so Ben is saying this right now. All right. So let me actually talk about some actual Latin stuff. What? This is, uh, it looks like you're, um, the picture of you on the mountain, you're, you're saying this screen. You get it? I get it. Okay. This is the last week of chapter 23. We're finally going to actually like start our routine of like two weeks of chapters. Chapters are so meaty and kind of, uh, impenetrable. I mean, they're kind of hard now. Now we might end up doing like three weeks per chapter, which we would still get to chapter 30 by the end of the year and beyond. There's only about 40 in the book. Am I making that up? No, y'all are going to get pretty staying close to the end, um, especially if we're doing two uh, a week or one, of, one every two weeks. But this is all to say we're going to have the chapter 23 grammar quiz on Thursday, our first grammar quiz. Finally, uh, one of the sentences will come from the Lao Kuan story. You guys will do the homework. Let me give it to you right now. And then another one will I'll be I'll go easy for the first one though. I won't make it something crazy. But it will be something you haven't seen. And I'll use like as much of chapter twenty three vocab as possible. All of you pass that twenty three I think you guys no, I have to get a retake sometime. No, well you have to do the twenty to twenty two one, but twenty three, you probably passed that. I think you did. Um yeah, you'll retake that on Thursday. And we'll have to see about Ben. I still got to check Ben's. Ben's, this is in the assignments. The thing I just gave them, it's in the assignments on the Google team. And for okay. Wednesday, you guys, look, this is another story. We had the Cicero story. This is actually from the textbook, and it's an adapt it's a prose adaption of Virgil. So it's not quite 100% unadulterated Virgil, but it's very close to 
I used to get mad when I was first learning Latin that the first mm, 20 chapters of Latin, it is mostly artificial textbook Latin. Even the Sententiae and Tiquai are technically adapted passages. But it's just because the language is really hard. They got an easy win. Now y'all basically are at the point where you're, I mean, y'all read real Cicero last week. That was straight up Cicero. They tweaked a couple things to make it a little tastier for your level. But no, nah, McKinley, you are translating real Latin. You had to wait two years for that. We're doing it. Now. So, do we have to do all of this by Wednesday or just half Let's say, because uh, we did the first, yeah, we did the first in terms of five, so you can remember that. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is, I'm going to say all of it. Okay. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to be a bit of, of a struggle. All of it. Now, let's see what page, y'all should all write this down. Because it didn't look like there was any lost words, but I already ran into one that I didn't think y'all had uh, a word that I didn't think had. So let's just make sure, in case you need to consult your textbook, I will, oh, there are. Wait, should we also do the last one? It is last one. That's what I want you to do. Not, oh, oh, not the, not the, not the other. The other page, we'll do a class. Okay. So y'all write, on the top of Alcon, write 191. And Ben, that's important for you too. 191 in the textbook. What did I miss that? It says, okay, they have this big explanation of the law on reading, and then they have all the, um, the lost terms. Um, they actually quite a bit of So is this one about the Trojan Wars? It's about the Trojan Wars, it's about oh. Lock-On. We've heard about Lock-On before, we hear about it again. But yeah, y'all are going to need that, actually. So we'll see. Um, and I'm able to fit more by not putting the gloss words. Did y'all see all that? Those are gloss words. So like, polygamous means wooden. Um, I think we've seen that one before, but like, it's, there's a lot. Um, Ligneus, Minerva, Uteris, Complera, Brianus. Okay, it's only like five or six, but still, that's maybe exactly. Um, yeah. Uh, why I'm even printing them out for you? I don't really know. I'm gonna ease off of this, I guess. If this was a bigger class, I wouldn't have printed this at all. But it's just like I have to make four copies of this. I don't really mind. But yeah, we'll probably start like relying more on the textbook pretty soon. Instead of me printing stuff out, can we get the story book? Like a I wish. Textbook? If you could yeah. probably make it such a good just y'all, that would cost the school all like thirty dollars to get all a thirty of that story. That's not bad for four people. I, I still have to. Anyway, it's not a bad idea. No, what I want to do is get y'all a reader for Gallic War for next semester, but we'll see about that. That's the thing I'd probably fight for. Not so much thirty-eight stories. Anyway. Any questions on, so we'll do spot translations. We're we'll kind of think it's a new translation today. We'll do that tomorrow. That's the first side of the page I gave you. Wednesday, we'll check out one. I know it's a lot. Good luck with it. It should be kind of interesting. It should be not as dense as the Cicero. Then we'll take the quiz on Thursday with the sentence from the last one. And then maybe I'll do a sentence from last week. I just won't tell you which one it is. I'll do a spot translation to get the data. Oh, we'll, we'll do a longer Jeopardy on Friday. Well, this chapter, do you have a lot of these things that you got Yeah, we should do items on Friday. So this is the chapter. That's it. That's the whole chapter. Um, yeah, that's it. And the vocab, which I'll prove on Friday that y'all know can do that. So what we're going to do today is look at these sentences. But we're probably, we're probably not going to get to them till tomorrow. What I want to do is the last bit of review. And for Ben, this is going to be... I mean, Ben's probably just going to check out when we start doing this, but we can get because oh, I want to make a verb summary, Ben. I want to use this template I'm giving them to make a summary of what I counted in my eighth grade, which I was eighth grade too, is 72 verb endings that we have. Isn't that crazy? Because <laughs> it's, it's basically six times six times two, because active and passive. Isn't that much? And this doesn't even include participles. So like one day maybe, no, I don't think we do a participle summary. Like you just need that one part of participle some, like summary that I've been showing. That's about all you need for like going to figure out how to But okay, this is going to take the rest of the class. We might not even finish. I need to start right now. Oh, yeah. So McKinley, what are the present active? And, and like, so it, it got cut off a little bit. So Ben, let's see, what is Ben going to do? Um, We should probably... Have a contest to see if you can make the neatest version of this, yeah. and then make a copy. Of, I can make a copy of that into a PDF. I think I know how to do that, and then I can mail that, email it to Ben or snail mail it. I could definitely snail mail. That'd be funny. Like, like, 
um, do the post office. Oh, we're not to separate and write. Yes, so if you want to write a one, two, three, and I'll maybe write SP up here. So just, just try your best to make this as neat as possible. The boxes themselves are going to get a little cramped, but it's okay. Let's see. I can at least make a door. Ben can like see. Let me put this in front. So yeah, ben, I mean, Ben, you could totally, it really, this is truly just a six by six grid. That's all it is. And then the first column present, then imperfect in future. It's like the, the verb trying to have in front of class for this whole time. Um, yeah. I'll at least like, I can have a PDF of this in the files tomorrow. And even then you'd still have to like print it out and make it. But anyway, and then on top of that, I'm gonna do a squiggly, I'll have to do a squiggly, but I'm gonna do a squiggly line to separate. My top half will be active, my bottom half will be passive. Squiggly. If you just want to do another like a normal line, that's fine, but I want it to be squiggly to differentiate it from all the other lines. There's a lot of lines. Um, but this kind of worked. We were able, ooh, Ben's making lines for us. Kind of. <laughs> Um, that'll be interesting. Thanks. Very, very good. True artiste there. Okay, wow. Oh, great. <laughs> uh, so let's do it. McKinley, what are the present active endings? I'm going to use blue. I-O-S-T. I-I-S-T. Yeah, there you go. No, believe it or not, some eighth graders like hesitated. I was like, what are the present actives? Like, this girl knew them, but she still like doubted herself. She was like, um, um, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, true. Right. it's true. What is present active? Yes, it's present active indicative. The mood is indicative, the voice is active, the tense is insane. <laughs> yes, Ben, very good. Very good. Um, so that's our present active. We do not need to, for the other ones, I actually want to write how we translate these. For present active, we don't need to, right? Please stop me if my handwriting makes it to where you don't know what I'm writing, so you can clarify. And for passive voice, since we're going to be doing active and passive of all six of these tenses, it would not be a bad idea to use, if you have a, even one other colored pen, it would not be a bad idea. I do have two probably like not great, but passable blue pens right here. Because I'm going to use a different marker color when I do the passive voice. So what is the passive first person singular ending? Uh, what? Oh. First person singular, passive, indicative. <laughs> yeah, no. It's... I, I picture O as part of this, but the book doesn't treat it as though there's an O there, but I don't think of O as the stem. So I added O in parentheses. And then what letter does passive like? Yeah. Oh, there's, a, there's a consonant that the passive voice really likes. Yeah. See, this is why we're making this. R. Anyone? It's R. R. So I'll, I'll write them first, and then I'm going to write how you translate them. Then R I S. So that almost sounds like we can read the thing. Then T U R. It's a T, not an F. Then M U R. Then Mini, the really weird one. Then in tour. Okay, and how do we translate these? Oh, well, maybe the only thing I would maybe write for present active is just the pronoun, just for just in case. I mean, you never know. Maybe you would sometimes forget that. How <laughs> so? You know those really weird movies that I was No, yeah, I was like a kid when those came out. What, why? I was, because I'm using tech, I'm, I'm zooming with them while projecting. Yeah, I was really confused because I don't know what's going on there. Oh, yeah, that's like you. No. He can, I mean, kind. It was, yeah, because he has, yeah, he can kind of. Yeah. I can see. What then? I can see. Okay, cool. And then you want to write how we translate the passive. I am verbed. That's important. The idea is that when y'all translate, you just take this thing out and the noun chart I made with third, fourth, and fifth dimension last week. And like, I'm not even like, I feel like sometimes teachers try to like make resources for kids and like even the teacher doesn't actually think it's going to be used or be helpful. But I really do think this is something you should bust out for translating. I'm not being disingenuous. I think this will help. Um, it, it saves you from like wiktionarying every verb because you shouldn't do that anyway, really. Uh, if you're relying, if you'd be relying on it too much. I tried to make it wiktionary, but it never gave me the actual word. Oh it only gosh. gave me everything else. I don't get like kids don't know how to use wiktionary. Well, I tried um, to figure it out, but I couldn't find where the actual translation for the word. Well, then you should I come to my of other cool information, but not the actual translation. Then, I just scroll down a bit. Oh, yeah. Either we should demo it at the beginning of class tomorrow, or you should come to my essay and I can show you real quick because it. 
I really, when I was in college, I actually loved Wood Canary. I knew sometimes I was overusing it a little bit, but I mean, you're still, you're still figuring out what the words are. It is, it's a little hand that it tells you, um, oh, this is the passive second person uh, imperfect uh, form of this verb. But it's like, I mean, if that's how you have to learn it, then so be it. We are verb. So we're kind of squeezing things into the passive uh, box, but y'all have like more room than I do. So fine. Y'all are verb. All right, let's take a this class in. I literally, this took all the eighth grade class time, so we're fine. We got 20 minutes. So we got five minutes on each tense of us. And then they are verb. And then hopefully while y'all are making this, you're thinking of the actual concepts for these tenses and voices and you're understanding the concept. Because it's not just like rotely memorizing all these endings. That's what this is helping you avoid, honestly. With this, you do not need to mechanically memorize all the endings. You just need to like, I mean, this would be hard to use, honestly, if you didn't at least have an idea of what a verb's ending was. But it'll help you with that. But you at least need to understand the concept. So please stop and ask me if you're like, wait, hold up. I like literally don't even understand the concept of the imperfect tense or the passive voice or whatever. But yeah, passive voice, the thing below the squiggly line, that's when the subject is being verbed instead of verbing themselves. Instead of actively verbing, they're, the verb is happening to the subject. Okay, imperfect, let's use red and green. That's what I did. Ben, are you, are you trying to make this or are you just kind of like chilling right now? Um, both. Both? Okay, cool. I'm seeing like maybe, like Allie, hers is orange, so we can try to make a color copy of hers. Anna's using different colors. We have some options for you in case we need to make a copy. So imperfect, um, Allie, what are the imperfect endings? I love these. Good. So yeah, BA in every single one. Gotta love them. First person singular is a little weird, but we've gotten used to first person singular sometimes ending in M. Um, and then how do we translate? Yes, exactly. Yep, yep, exactly, Ben. Um, so this is gonna be, I'm gonna write, I was verbal. But if you've decided that you want to translate it as verbed, that's fine. Right here, I'll put or verbed. Verbed is okay. Plus the word verbing is a little better because it's like a little more accurately the, what we call in English, the past continuous. But if you treat imperfect just like perfect, that's fine. The problem is you guys and the eighth graders do not know your perfect in. So maybe it'd be good if you think of imperfect as different. Uh, I was verbing. Do I have to write this each time? Probably not, right? I kind of want to be completionist about this. And you guys can, but I'll probably start taking uh, shortcuts here. Though. You were verbing. It was verbing. And how about I don't write the equivalent? So I can start with no passive. But McKinley, like, what would you write here? Um, not I was verbing, you were verbing, or it was verbing, but you'd write... Yeah, well, we um, was or we were verbing. We, like we were verbing. There you go. Yeah, you just gotta say it out loud to hear what actually sounds right. Yeah, so y'all can fill in the rest of that, but I'm gonna save right now. And the imperfect, what two letters are we gonna squeeze in between the stem and our present passive ending? I'm sorry. Yeah, the imperfect passive. What are those two letters? They would be what? Once again, it'll be BA. We're going to just squeeze BA between the stem and the, the present passive. It'll be BAR. And that would be what? Not I am verb, but I was. Was verb. Did Ben say that? Yes. Yeah, I was verb. Which is actually also how you translate the perfect passive. It's almost like there shouldn't be an imperfect and a perfect tense. Like, just like delete one. What they were to make all this? Darn you, Romans. Well, it's an inflectional language. Well, you'll see, because like in English, to communicate tense, we have to use, it's so funny, by the time we get to future perfect, to translate the future perfect passive tense, every time in English, you have to bust out three helping verbs. 
will, have, and been. Whereas in Latin, all they got to do is have the right ending or form. So say what you will about English, but inflectional languages kind of know what's up. Analytical languages overly rely on word order and helping verbs. And it gets obnoxious. Okay, let me pick up the case for There is. You were verb. And I'll that'll probably be the last one I write. I can write all of them. And um, Batur. It was verb. Ba more. We were verb. So these are easy to form. You gotta love imperfect. It's so consistent for all four con uh, conjugations. Ba many. Ba many. And ba tour. So yeah, it never gets better than imperfect. Now, can anybody think of any issues we're gonna have with the future tense? There's too many uh, things that go with it, like perfect, active perfect, future, active perfect. It's just that those first endings we get for future, bow this bit, those are only for first and second conjugation. So unfortunately, we'll have to divide up even wow. just the top half, the active half, the future endings. So it's about to get. Well, not really that complicated because we like y'all don't need to translate future tense, right? Like, you can just write will but verb up here once, and now you know how the future tense works. Okay, right? So bow, this, fit. Like, and why can't these be used for third and fourth? I'll never really get why. Is there like logic to it? I never really stop even like try to find it. I just like accepted it. But. Fuck cake is the only weird one, kind of, but we turned it into a meme a long time ago. A meme? Yep, and then third and fourth conjugation. Do you remember this one? It's a little weird. Uh, yep. A, right? A, and then what? Um, A. Yeah, M, weirdly. And then it switches over to E. Long ES, short ET, terrestrial long AMOS. A to so if you want to, you probably want to label that. And again, I'm not going to write out like I will verb, you will verb, it will verb, because translating the future is actually super chill. You just bust out the helping verb will. That's it. That's all you got to do. All right, now let's do future passive. Future passive is a little weirder than imperfect. Everything about future is not as fun as imperfect. So it is B O R. I will be verb. B. Is it? Oh, yeah, B E R I S for some reason. If you start to write how to translate it, though, you got to write the whole thing. You can't short shrift it if you start to write it. Like if I just wrote you will be dot dot dot, that's not enough. And to be you will be verb. That's how we make it passive and future. All right, and bit work. And bimmer. And bimini. And then um on tour. On tour or Ian tour. We touched on that briefly on last week. The reason I put two for third person plural is because third and fourth get their own different passive ending, but they're really only different. Um, you know, you get compares, uh, comparative adjectives and other things. Future. Future. Oh, no. Mm. All right, we're not going to be able to fit in all the future at indicative passive endings for third and fourth conjugation. Uh, There's a copy here. Like, like, imperfect is still the same. It's still bar, bar, a spot to earth. But future, I mean, I'm putting that one in there. But if we try to do all of them, it's gonna be too hard. It's just like a long E. 
and then the ending instead of it's, it's IE. I'm going to squeeze it in, but you guys don't worry about it. Yeah, let's just not worry about it. So, but just know, maybe you just like write that. Like if you see IE and then a passive ending, that's actually future passive third and fourth conjugation. I don't know why third and fourth had to be so weird about the future tense. Any questions so far about kind of getting this, making it to where it, uh, it seems sure. useful? Yeah. Yeah, we can almost say like B, like IE equals B. Because I would show this to y'all on the projector. I have it on a slide, but that would make this thing look crazy. But yeah, it's just right here. Um, Chapter I guess ends. third, it's just a long E. So you look at that, the present endings for future, um, it's just like I in the ending. For the future, it's either E in the ending or I, E in the ending. So there's just no B. So like, this is third, third I am fourth. Present, they get the normal, the shows are fine, there's normal stuff in it. For the future, instead of like four, uh, bear, so four, it's just, a long E in the ending instead of uh, not a long E in the present, or an I in the long E. So let's not worry about it too much. Future passive, they won't come on that much. They really won't, actually. Ugh, those are nasty. Okay. Perfect. Now, this is important because y'all seem to not know your perfects. I'm going to use blue because perfect is kind of related to the present tense, oh, which wow. I did in blue. Let's see, Jack, what's the perfect for singular perfect ending? I. Yes. McKinley, what's the second one? It's a weird one. There is an S. It's an IS, then what? Something weird. Very distinct. Jack? It's T I S E. Isn't that weird or something? Very weird one. Then these next two are bad. Because, like, for a third and fourth conjugation verbs, they could just look like present tense ending, which is fun. Oh, no, I skipped one. Yeah. I see. Oh, okay. T, then in this. Then it's just it's this. It it's just adding an S to the singular verb. Oh, I well, like just T with Latin. And then A or this. At least, like, we share that with Latin. Is like, at least sometimes they, they use S to make things plural, too. Kind of. With, <laughs> with nouns, though. with nouns and Accusative now. Oh, I mean, accusative now specifically, and like, in in that. That's that's it. Uh, otherwise, they use like long I or eight. Okay, and so this is gonna be. I'm gonna write the whole thing out. I have verb, but you can also just write verb. It's fine. You have verb. I won't write all. Of it. I just want to write them to include that the third person it changes over to has. It has. And y'all can write the rest. And now this is where it gets weird. So I'm actually going to erase or verb because I think I'll just know that, or you can squeeze it into the box probably. I'm actually going to write a little. Verb dictionary entry real quick. Amare of two lines, which is weird. Amawi, Amasin. And I'm just going to underline Amav to demonstrate that for the perfect tense, uh, you use the third principal part of the verb. That's like, it's, it's that y'all still aren't quite used enough to the, um, or custom enough to the endings, combined with the fact that we were learning verbs for 11 chapters without looking at the third principal part of the verb. A mistake I'm repeating with my own kids this year. I'm, I'm like, oh, just pay attention to the first two principal parts. And then when we get to chapter 12, you can throw tomatoes at me. But we use that third principal part to, for the stem of the perfect. Uh, and we use the fourth principal part um, Y'all don't have to write this. But I'm going to call it the fourth PP to form all the perfect passives. And so the first person singular one, I'll actually write that out. But then second principle part, I'll actually just write fourth PP plus a form of sumasa. So it would be like a matus 
assume would mean what, anyone? I I have been birthed. Yeah, I have been birthed. So I'm actually I'm, I'm using Alma Omar to form it, just because otherwise I'd have to write what I'm going to write on the second one, which is just four. BP as in principal part, make sure you like know that. Plus, not soon, but since it's second person, it'll be at. And I meant to switch over to the black marker, now it's going to be blue. Sorry. Oh, I can't see. I know. Ah. It actually like weirdly helps to have another pencil color. Um, I'll change this one. I won't do it since the third person. I don't feel like. So, fourth, principal part. Plus S. And that, that would be you. Uh, and so at least like to help it like just the pronoun is changing so just i to you to it um it's not uh um what was i gonna say it's still gonna be been or have been verb um i, I guess for it it'll be has been verb so I'll, That'll be the last one I write it for. It has been verb. All right, no more translation. Fourth PP in the plural, it need to be a plural, probably, or a word. Plus sumus, we have been verb. Fourth PP plus estus, y'all have been verb. And then the fourth principal part plus. So just be wary of this. We're just getting the hang of this. Present passes, they just have an ending. That usually has the letter R in it. Perfect passes though, they're in these two chunks. The fourth principal part, agreeing with case number and gender, the thing that's modifying, adjective style. And then a form of sum essay, agreeing with the person number and tense of what's being expressed. Any questions on that? Have I lost you? You're like, oh, I don't know. Want to try to get this? Okay. Only twenty-four endings left. What? <laughs> okay. Let's see. We got we got five minutes. So I'll do, if we don't get the future perfect, it's fine. As far as future perfect pa passive, I bet we'll never see a future perfect passive ever. Not on wood. I bet it will come up. Yeah. Be bad. So now we'll just do clue perfect. We take the same third principal part we use for perfect, but instead of E is the it, we're going to use wrong, the imperfect form of sum essay. And that's not I have verb, but it's I, I will have verb. I have had. Had verb. So if anything, just underline the word had like a thousand times over blue perfect. That's the blue perfect, buddy. Then eros, I won't translate any more of these because so I can't. It's just have for all of them. You have verb, it has verb, et cetera. Eramus. With ERA happening over again. ERA, ERA, ERA. And it really got crazy at the end. I bet that this game was like, here's the language. Fill in the blanks on your own. Yes, so. And then our blue perfect passive. We're going to take um, like the same fourth principal part, so I'll reuse Amatis. And then instead of saying soon, we're going to say what? You want Amatis? Soon? Amatis Eron. Eron. I want to put it up here, but they go together. Aram, which means, y'all don't they couldn't do it this way. Yeah, I had been. I'm running out of room. Hopefully, y'all are still okay. But they go together. I just wrote them weird. I'm not just sort of wrong. I have been verb as opposed to I have been. Okay. Um, and then so on and so forth. The second will be, uh, I won't write a mock each time. I could. I hope y'all know what I mean by fourth principal part. That's another part of the verb that we're still kind of getting used to. Uh, okay. Second time I said verb. Omatis again. Fourth, P P plus instead of Iram, it'll be Iras. So it's literally going to be the ending of the blue perfect verb right above it that we're we're adding to the fourth control part. Oh my gosh. Oh, there's no audio. Yeah, I'm still here. So I want to play Minecraft. I'm tired of 
home. Hey, we got a three day weekend this week. Yes, but I, but I didn't get enough sleep. Plus, my dog came in at 5 30 in the morning. That was over face against me. You have to take it for granted because y'all are like, why do we even have five days a week anyway of uh, school? But like, it, for teachers, it's actually kind of cool. Like, we, we mostly get a week, uh, a three day weekend uh, pretty much every month. Kinda, and then, like, every two or three months, we get like a, a full week off. So, I have more paid vacation than like anybody else who's not a teacher that I know. But we have to do homework over stuff like the Christmas break. But like, what else are kids gonna do with all? Y'all get three weeks, a months off to do nothing, and like, it is a way of like getting you uh, used to the whole capitalism thing, where you have to do stuff for eight hours, five days a week, or else you will starve to death. That's kind of something. But during summer break, my time is relaxed, not to think of the ending gloom of our. I know. Chaotic. That's why we make sure kids have summer break because it's like we want y'all to have free time for a little while, but eventually, unless you become a teacher. You won't really have that, and you just work for, until you retire. And honestly, wasn't bad. I really did enjoy it. Much. I did not enjoy typing up a whole summary about it. It's too much to type about. It. <laughs> that is a lot. Um, what book are you on right now? Uh, third book. Uh, what's the book? What's book three called? Um, uh, Helen's Helen's. Yes, that's that's a pretty good book. It's about to get even better. Is it about to get to the death? Or well, you're you're about to watch a duel if you haven't already. Ooh, okay, yeah, that does sound good. Yeah, we're getting very close to it. You might be disappointed on how that ends up, but it's fine. There's, there's really good stuff to come. Uh, like I said, book five, I think. Diomedes is about to... He's my favorite character. No one cares about Diomedes, but I do. He's just freaking awesome. I like Athena, because she's my favorite character. Athena. Athena loves Diomedes almost as much as she loves Odysseus. So these are the future perfect endings. Errant is the one to look for, because um, Errant was already taken by regular perfect. And that's will have verb. So it's just these two helping verbs that always show up every time. Nothing else is going to change except the, the subject. So I only write it once. And then future passive is just like clue perfect passive. And if we don't, yeah, the bell's about to ring, so it's like fine actually uh, if y'all don't get this, but it's like a uh, fourth PP plus arrow. And that's I will. Have you just add been to the equation, not been want to okay. been verb? Isn't that nuts? I mean, see, say like English is not as elegant. You have to bust out three helping verbs just to translate a perfect so future perfect passive. It is bad. It's so bad. Wait, it's not that bad because we're used to it. This has never been talking What if I hate auxiliary verbs? What if I think that they're bad? Okay. That's a real opinion I have. I wake up every morning and said, "Man, helping verbs." I don't like to use it. A rich. Well, can you make a sentence without helping words? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, Will it make sense? I love you. Oh, okay. If you just stay in the present tense, yeah, if you always stay in the present tense. And even then, because if you say I am a verbing, am is an auxiliary verb. Eremis, fourth PP, Eritus. All right, Ben, you're allowed to leave and get ready for math, but, uh, they got to finish this oh, wait, we only got for one you. Finish it. Uh, I mean, not really. Not future perfect passive truly is not great. Anyway, have a good rest of the day, Ben. Bye. I finished it. So, yeah. Uh, oh, it is a runt at the end. That's weird. But it's a runt for future perfect passive. Yeah, but it's not. A runt is just the ending. It's like a weird ending. Time to go back into hell. All right, let me take a gander at what y'all started up with. Allie she, she had the luxury of having a lot of colors. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's got a one. You didn't write anything about the third principal part, but maybe you just understand that well enough to where you can still write it back. Plus, you didn't have to do it. Okay. This is only slightly incomplete because, like I said, our future passive third and fourth conjugation verbs are not really quite there. But that's because they're really bad endings and I don't like them. Let me go. Uh -huh, I know what I'm going to do in that way. I'm going to ram into people and y'all some shots. No, I mean, your class is right there. Just run to it. All right, now. Yeah, they always go back to lockers, and there's that one kid that just shoves through the crowd, and you're like, whoa. All right. Yeah.